last year that I worked on mobile development, um, especially Android development, we've noticed the same problem occurring ev on every single project. And it's at the end of the project, especially when you're um, developing for uh, both iOS and Android, we still have to like manage all the labels and translations and stuff like that in the last couple of weeks. And there was a pretty big problem for us and then we came uh, with a solution for it by developing a tool that would help us with that. And that tool, we called it the Llama. Now, the reason for that is really simple. Because it actually means label manager. And it's, uh, like I said, it's a tool for mobile development, for managing your labels, pretty much. And it's a web application. And this made it, makes it really easy because you don't have to install it first. And other people can use it as well that um, don't always need to be at the developing area, such as translators, perhaps. So you can have translators log on to the Llama and do the translation for you and you get all your labels correctly. So what does it particularly do? Um, it stores just everything in one place for all platforms. So it's not like in one place you, you look and you see like, okay, here I have my Android labels and here I have my iOS labels just put in one place and the labels are used for both iOS and Android. And the good thing about that is that you, you don't have to do um, too much uh, translations that, that have to happen uh, two times. And when everything is done, you just export it and you can get the, the strings files for uh, iOS, the XML files for Android, even uh, if you want Excel files for other people to look at it. It all works. So, uh, in the next couple of slides, I'm just going to show you how it works um, with some screenshots. Um, like, I'm just going to show you a whole process of using the Llama. So, if you want a quick start, just com uh, just import a complete file. Just select, like, I'm going to import an Android uh, format, uh, strings.xml file, and it's going to be in this locale like English US here, add some other options and then import it. But of course, it needs to be, uh, more needs to be done. Like it has to be possible in development to add a label. So you can also add one label at a time. And here's where everything comes clear. Like you can add like uh, a short description, which makes it really easy for other people, such as translators, to know where the label is going to be used and what does what it means. Then you can add it like I only need this in Android or I need it for both uh, platforms. And you can add it to groups. That makes it also really easy to know where they add. So if you have like a group that you make like home, everything for your home screen. And then if you look at the labels, you see something be between the brackets here. And we use this for placeholders. And if you can read it correctly, it says username with a couple of signs ahead behind it. So translators know that this is going to be the place where the username is going to be here, the amount, and so on. So this way we have meaningful placeholders so translators know what they're all about. Just uh, add in a name for usability where you going to position it, the type, and perhaps, if it's a number, add some decimals to it. This results into this screen, which, give you, which gives you a, a much better overview of all your labels. You can look at the translations that have already happened, and those that still need to be done. Okay, at the end you can export your labels, just use the, the locals that you want. Um, platforms that you want, and so on. And when you export it, you get a report as well, that you know things might have gone wrong with the export, some things that you want to be warned of, like perhaps on iOS, you don't have a default fallback to go to the default.
default language. So you have to have all the labels in one file. And it says like, okay, for this label, we made a fallback because it wasn't available in German. And then we get this result. Like we get like uh, a folder structure for all Android, Excel, and iOS. And you just can drag the, the resource files into them and it will uh, override the existing ones. So this is pretty much how it, came, how it comes out. One of the big advantages when um, making changes is uh, that you can create different branches as well. If you say like, I'm going to make a special version of it, um, you can make a, a different branch for that. And it's very important when you have like multiple people working on it that you can manage the accounts, grant permissions to people because you don't want translators like to add or delete labels because you're going to need them and you don't want them to mess up. So one of the extra features is also that you have a logging system behind it and you know like, okay, this user made these changes at that time. Uh, also, when you do complete imports, you have a backup system that nothing goes wrong. And like right now, we already uh, implemented something with uh, an import with AND. So just one click and your complete strings files are already in your project. We're going to look to, to make something like that, perhaps in Gradle uh, for Android Studio as well. So if anybody has any questions, um, I suggest to, to ask me a bit later and contact us at apps.duo.be if you want more information. Thank you.